A renowned sculptor, Ed Hamilton has created commissioned monuments, plaques, and personal works that tell the story of America and show the rich diversity of our culture. Sculptures That Speak Volumes is the story of how a young African-American boy who grew up in downtown Louisville discovered his unique gift and has shared it with the rest of the world. I grew up in the heart of downtown Louisville, between 6th and 7th Street. It was the Black Business District. Two events happened to me as I was growing up, and I was in uh, junior high to high school. The first thing that happened was my junior high school teacher saw something in me. And she said, I'm gonna call your mother. And I thought, oh my God, what's she gonna do call my mother for? I didn't know. I thought maybe I'd done something. It was to call her to tell her that I think this young man's got a talent and I wanna make sure I help develop it. She said, you're going to art school. And I said, okay. And so that's how it all began right there between junior high and high school. I got a four-year scholarship to uh, the Art Center School. And that Art Center School was on the, in the surrounding campus of uh, University of Louisville. They try to teach you to be a painter and how to draw, but I couldn't wait to get into the 3D class, sculpture class. And that's where I literally found myself. I graduated in 1969, unbeknownst to me, didn't know where I was going, didn't know what I was going to do. This one particular day, I was going to get clay for class. And the clay shop was right next door to Barney Bright studio. Now, I knew of Barney Bright's works, and I followed his works in the galleries here in and out of town. And so I said, you know, if I could just meet Barney, I, you know, I, I would just love to meet him. And lo and behold, what do you think would happen? He came out the front door. And I thought, oh my God, this is it. I got out of the car. I walked over to him very carefully. And I said, Mr. Bright, I'm Ed Hamilton. And I would just love to see your studio. He said, sure, come on in. I do remember him saying it just like that. I crossed that threshold and it would change my world, change my life. Barney Bright didn't see color. And all else is history. I started uh, being an apprentice under him. And that's how I became a sculptor. The commission that's in front of the federal building was done by Barney Bright, and that was the Wing River Horse. And so, literally, when he got the commission to do that, it was my role, my job was to take the small model that he did and build up an armature structure for him to put clay on to build the big piece. And so literally we trucked it down there and put it up on the platform and uh, it's been down there ever since. And the, the, the thing that really impressed me with Barney, and most sculptors don't do this, but he literally allowed me to sign my name, and then my name is right under his, Ed Hamilton, as his assistant. And that was really an honor for him to do that because he didn't have to do that. What inspired me to come up with the vision of how I would portray York? I knew that he was first generation slave. There were no pictures of York and nobody painted him. So I literally had to visualize within my own spirit, within my own blackness, what I thought he would look like. So in my search for York, I wanted to give him great strength and dignity. You had to look him in the eye and think, that man is somebody. But in my process of deconstructing him, thinking, now wait a minute now, he's gonna be standing out here on this monolith overlooking the mighty Ohio. And you feel this man's physicality. And so he's standing there overlooking all of this domain saying, look from where I have come. As I said, no subservient York for me. He had to have great strength. That's the feeling that I wanted, and that's the feeling that I think I achieved. 
When I got the call to create an Abraham Lincoln Memorial, it was at that moment I tried to absorb myself into who this man was. One early morning, I woke up, I ran into the computer room, and put two pieces of paper together and drew out this scene. I wanted to have a Lincoln that was accessible. I wanted a Lincoln that kids could play on. I wanted people to come up and feel like, oh, Mr. Lincoln, sit down and have, let's talk. That's why his hand is out. So I wanted him, like I said, to be the Lincoln that people could feel, could relate to. It would be fair to say that, yes, I love Louisville. This is my town. I roller skated up and down those sidewalks on Walnut Street. I've left blood, I've left skin, but there's nothing like being at home in your own hometown. There's nothing like being accepted in your own hometown. And that's what happened because I got to work. So I've been blessed, I've been really blessed that not only I got the work out of here that recognized my talent, but when that happened, my city recognized it as well. How blessed is that? This is just one of many stories that can be heard and experienced only in Kentucky. <laughs>